Hi guys, Gary JRC here back with another video. So today's video is about the XRX and also about going 124th scale. So don't worry, I'm not going to abandon the regular Mini Z size cars. This is just uh, something I really wanted to do, just show the versatility of these uh, rear wheel drive drift cars. Now just to give you an idea of comparison of size, uh, here is a 94mm Mini Z with a Skyline shell and you can see the difference in the size of these cars. So this is a 124th scale Liberty Walk GTR. So this is a 124th scale Liberty Walk GTR Aoshima model kit. Uh, you have to assemble the shell and you have to paint everything. You have to glue on the uh, wheel arches. Every, it's a proper model car and I was a bit daunting for me at first. I've not tried anything quite on this level. But once I got into it, it was no different to assembling a Mini Z white body shell and spraying and painting and gluing it together. So the stats on this car, obviously it's a lot larger and a lot longer. The wheelbase of this car is, I think, set to about 116 millimeters. Now, that's possible with the XRX because it has the adjustable chassis option that will go up to 120 millimeters. So, this don't do not underestimate how much bigger these cars are than the regular Mini Z. They're a lot bigger. So, I'm going to give you some measurements now just to put it into perspective and show you what we're dealing with. Let's uh, take off the shell. So, I've mounted this using mag magnets. And the shell itself has magnets inside. So let's take some measurements of the uh, car itself. So the wheelbase, if we go center to center, is about 116. Okay, about 116 center to center. Yeah, there you go. Can you see that? And the width is where it gets impressive so I had to widen this quite a bit to make it uh, fit in the shell so our wheel widths now are about 86 millimeters so that's the wheelbase of smallest size mini Z you can get in the MRO one same at the front 86 millimeters I'll turn it around this way if you can't see that's pretty wide. If you compare that to the uh, skyline here that I was just showing you. And that's closer to 69, 70 millimeters. Massive difference. So what other spec has this car got on it that uh, is not standard? As you can see, I'm running a GL censored brushless speed controller and a GL censored 3500 kV motor. Pinion is a, a GL pinion. I think that's about probably a 15 or a 16 teeth. Also, you can see this is my special edition with the optional alloy arms. The steering angle now is still, you can still get pretty much sideways with this. I've seen some other versions of this where people are struggling to get the uh, wheels almost to get the maximum angle but I've had no such problem I have had to adjust the arms as you can probably see just there but because they're metal they lend themselves to adjustment just fine and it doesn't weaken them in any way so yeah we have got really good lock all alloy gearbox I think I've gone through the alloy parts before I'm still using a standard servo I haven't upgraded this servo I think that's just the standard one I'm using there Actually, no, guys, I'm wrong. It's the atomic one. So it's an atomic servo I'm using. And that's, I think, uh, same size as the Jenning D561MG Metal Gear servo. The other one that I use is similar. Okay, so specs on the whole, you can see it's pretty wide. You're probably asking yourself, how did I get the front so wide? Because those don't like standard grub screws. That they're, um, they're not. What I've done there is I've used a, I think, M2 bolt and cut it into pieces for the right length so this is stuff you can get from your hardware store so it's an m2 screw and it's got the machine thread so it fits into the metal parts quite nicely same with the lower arms i have done some work on the lower arms which 
probably didn't need to do for this width of the wheelbase. You can see I've cut sections off there and there. They could have been full size and this car would have been fine, but it enables me to go to a smaller size quite easily. Obviously the magnetic mounts, these are pretty easy to make yourself. I've used, uh, I can't remember what you call them now, but it's something to do with the Raspberry Pi for mounting the circuit boards. It's got a specific name, I'll put it in the description. And these magnets are for Magnets Direct and they've just been screwed directly in. I'll give you a little look around so you can see it's not that hard to do. This is a plastic uh, bumper mount for a GLA, which I've used, just chopped it up. I didn't want to chop up one of my mounts. It just means then, what I mean by mounts is one of the Mini Z mounts. I didn't want to use one of those, which I've seen other people do. And it's got actual holes in the back of the chassis already for you to screw these onto. The rear arms, I had to make a lot wider. Now I have got the uh, XRX DPA adjustable arms, you can see. They were ratcheted out all the way and they still weren't quite wide enough for this car. So I had to drill some more holes in and then use a different nut and bolt to enable me to extend it so far out. Also, I've got now, these are the 13.5 millimeter long drive shafts at the back. The car sits pretty low. I've actually experimented this chassis by adding 50 to 80 grams at the back and putting weight over the front to get different responses. And I found that the more weight I added, especially at the back, the more straight line traction you get, which sometimes makes it harder to lose the back end, which would definitely be better on a, uh, a bigger circuit where you need to build up momentum and slide for longer distances with the weight at the back, enabling you to swing sideways for longer. But on the smaller kitchen worktop, I took all the weight off. I left, I think 10 grams at the front or just the weight of the shell there. And then you, you've still got the maneuverability. It'll, it'll slide really slowly, really easily. But uh, when you add weight, it sometimes becomes harder to get it to slide, but then it will stay sliding sideways for longer with the momentum. So that's something just I've learned as I've gone along. So in terms of um, the battery arrangement on this is slightly different to our regular battery arrangement. As you can see, the battery now goes long ways. I've got a bit of Velcro at the bottom. I am going to tidy this up. I've still got a little bit of work to do since I installed the uh, sensor DSC. And some of the wiring could be a bit tidier, but when you're tinkering around, you just want to start testing it. There you go. Battery goes lengthways. And this setup, I can return it back to a normal 94 millimeter just by taking the battery off, changing the position lengthways from lengthways to widthways and uh, reducing the chassis width right back down. So what you guys all really want to know is about the handling. Now, wow, I think having the width at the front definitely makes a difference to how the car controls itself and reduces the amount of gyro involvement you need. I can almost drift this with zero gyro because it's almost like a one-tenth scale now. It's pretty wide, it's pretty long. The offset wheels I'm using here, I think I'm using offset three at the front and offset three at the back. What that means is when I make my steering angle, the wheels are further apart from each other. If you imagine if I was using a zero offset, they'd be closer together. I think having that ability to have a wider offset wheel at the front enables the car to definitely control better when you want to crawl sideways.
Hi guys, so I thought I'd just show you how this car handles on a uh, really slippery surface with, I think there's no weight counterbalance in this car at the moment, that's why I've got the spoiler on the back just to signify that it's uh, weightless. So you can see I can move the tail around pretty easily, it slides under control and as you can see I'm changing the transitions one direction to another without any difficulty at all and I'm getting pretty close to those mats without much trouble. And this is a bigger car now, we're talking you know, 116mm wheelbase with an 86 millimeter wheel track width and it's beautiful i mean you can see the control slides i actually think at this size the car handles way better than it does at 90 millimeters but i think it's more for the track width which makes the biggest difference overall you can point it and it'll go where you want it to go and certainly you can see i've got no fear with the uh, corners of the table there bearing in mind it took me three or four days to make this shell that if it didn't fall off it would break my heart but anyway, as you can see, it's it's given what it needs to, and it will turn and stop exactly as you want it to. Overall, I think if you're going to go into this size scale of racing, you're going to need more space. It will turn pretty quickly, and I, certainly I'm managing to do things that I can do with a smaller size. But if you're going to race a few of them, you can imagine the lane width would need to be wider. wider. So, you know, if you're a lane width for three, I'm probably thinking you'd need at least a meter. But anyway, guys. Uh, that's just me doing a quick summary of what the car's about. If you like what I do here on the channel, you know, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys all next time.